Good evening. This is KC9UDX. My name is Matt, and I welcome you to the 2 a.m. net. The purpose of this net is to promote the use of amplitude modulation and also to establish this part of this band as a place for AM activity in this area. Everyone is invited to listen. Licensed amateurs who can do so legally are encouraged to check in. We listen in the AM mode and transmit in the AM mode where possible. If you cannot transmit in AM, we encourage you to listen in AM and transmit in FM. If you are transmitting in FM, please adjust your transmit frequency a couple KCs above or below from our received frequency. This facilitates the use of slope detection, that is, demodulating your FM signal with our AM receivers. When checking in, please announce your call sign in standard phonetics. Again, this is KC9UDX. My name is Matt, and I will now begin accepting check-ins. Any stations wishing to check in, please come now. Uh, good evening, Matt. Uh, W9JCC. And WB9JCC. All right, got two right off the bat. Welcome to the net, Frank, W9JCC, and also Dave, WB9BWP. Do we have anybody else? All right, hearing none so far, I'll say that, uh, well, welcome back, Frank. It's been a couple months. Uh... Not uh, terribly too much new for me. I got a new Pinebook Pro in the mail today from Hong Kong. I, they shipped it out the other day. It's amazing how quick that stuff gets here. Went to State Fair yesterday and have an upcoming camping trip to Mirror Lake. And tonight it sounds like there's a lot of noise on the band. <coughs> Excuse me. Not sure what all of it is. Sounded like maybe a couple of people tuning up on frequency here. But then I heard a lot of other strange sounds. My receiver is very, very wide. Uh, well, it's got a very wide IF filter, so it, uh, it hears all over the band all the time. One of these days I've got a Q multiplier, I should say one of these years, that I want to incorporate into this receiver so that I don't have that issue and maybe I can hear a little bit better on this frequency. But until then I can hear all kinds of other stuff going on in the area. And with that, I will go to the top of the list, Frank W9JCC from KC9UDX. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, KCI and UDX in the net, uh, WNJCC. And uh, good evening, Dave. Uh, hearing everybody uh, real good. I got a phone deal over there on you, Matt. I didn't get an estimate reading on Dave, but uh, Dave was quite loud as well. And uh, Pine uh, Book Pro, I think you said you got. I'm guessing that's some kind of a laptop. And. Uh, I bought a new laptop here about six or seven months ago, and that's what I was <laughs> spending a lot of time on here uh, the last couple of weeks, and I finally got that. <laughs> Excuse me, it fixed up. I had to take it down to factory reset twice, and I uh, finally got a lot cool up and, and working fine. And we're doing some other stuff, too. I, Downloaded, uh, it's a new machine, it's got Windows 11 on it, so I put, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the EasyMac, it's an antenna software program, but I rolled it out and uh, they got it, NW7EL, I think it was called, they rolled it, uh, retired, and you just put it up there for free now. And so I downloaded the latest version, and uh, my programs don't seem to run too well on <laughs> So I came downstairs and hunted up, uh, an old disc I got from him way back, well, probably in the early 90s. And I'm going to put it on the old computer and see if uh, I can uh, get some of the programs to run on that. Okay, I'm State Fair. We didn't go, uh, we haven't gone, we haven't gone for a few years now. 
only a dozen one forty five <laughs> too well so and you gotta be able to walk around quite a bit to go there, so uh we used to like to go out on the bus and uh it was always a good time. Go up one of the uh parking rides just close by here and then uh I'll take the bus ride down. It used to only be a couple of bucks and now I think it's a little bit more. Anyway, uh, back to you on that uh, KC9 UDX W9 J C C all right, thank you, Frank. And yeah, every, everything's a couple bucks, <laughs> a couple bucks more these days. It's amazing uh, how expensive my couple hours of the fair was yesterday. And uh, Easy Neck, I am, I am very unfamiliar with, but I guess I know what it is. I, I understand a little bit about it. I have never actually used it. I think I tried a couple of times and the copies that I had would not run on the hardware that I had at the time. I uh, I suppose I could install it and try it again one of these days. The Pinebook Pro, you're correct, is a laptop. It costs right around $200. I think I bought the first one for less than that. This latest one was just above $200, I think. <coughs> And that's shipped from from Hong Kong. What what Pine 64 is is a startup company. It was one of these crowdfunded deals to compete with the Raspberry Pi with some more powerful ARM-based processors out of China. And uh, so, if you can imagine a laptop based on something like the Raspberry Pi, that's sort of what the Pinebook Pro is. This is my third one. I've got one that I'm using right now here to set up the... Well, it's not doing any of the real work. It, it connects to other... I've got it connecting to other computers here to uh, handle the YouTube stuff here for the net. And uh, I bought that when they first came out with this. It was, uh, it was the second batch, I think, that they shipped. And then I bought my wife one uh, shortly after that and I had to be on a waiting list for a long time for that one and then I bought this other one here recently I'm going to dedicate the original one to a specific purpose so I figured I'd get another one to use for all the other things I use it for it's very handy for me uh, mostly to do what I'm doing here I, I connected you know using VNC to all the other computers I have here doing various things. I, uh, I run NetBSD on mine. In fact, I have not done it yet, but this brand new one, the first thing I'm going to do is wipe it out and install NetBSD on it. And uh, it's just kind of like having a graphical Unix terminal wherever I want to have it. It's very, I find it very handy. Also uh, emulates the Commodore 64 very well. And being ARM based, I suppose you can run a specific version of Windows 10, but I have no desire to do that other and otherwise it will not run any popular Windows software at all. And with that, next we'll go to Dave. Oh, and uh, Frank, you are you are pegging the meter as always, uh, 10 out of 10. We'll go to Dave. WB9BWP, it's your turn from KC9UDX. Okay. Uh, good evening, guys. Um, yeah, Jerry said he might be here tonight. Um, unfortunately, we have uh, the rookie net that we've created. Uh, I'm right, he has that and that's at 8 o'clock. And uh, he tends to check in over there. Uh, I end up running it at least a couple times a month until we fucker some other guys in. We got two of the new guys that are running the net, so that's a, a good start. And yes, the, the world of uh, Windows and whatnot. Uh, let's see, I, I got. Uh, I bought a new laptop, oh, I think it's a couple of years now. And, and most of the time I use it to uh, uh, watch the cable TV. Um, I've got an old HP laptop that I have to flush because I, I have to go back to ground zero with that. So 
somewhere down the line, it got itself twisted with graphics drivers. It it uh, comes up, displays everything just fine. But any time you try to do any, I mean, even playing a video or any kind of uh, trick graphics stuff, it just goes away. Blank screen. Um, I don't know if it locks up or if it's trying to do anything in the back background. And I think that occurred with a driver update, but I'm not sure. Um, that's one of these things, well, if I got to flush it and start everything over again, that's not a 10-minute process, so I just keep putting it off. And every once in a while I pull it out, well, let's see if, <laughs> let's see if it works better today than it did you know, three months ago. And, find out that it doesn't I was like yeah, okay well then I so then I put it back in the side well we'll get to it someday uh stand by here I should just go in there and turn the timer off instead of doing this but anyway um then both of you guys are uh reading about F7 but uh uh copy of bold to find Frank is booming in here is Audio is a little louder than uh, you met. Um, State Fair, yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't been there for a few years, and I'm not. I don't know if the county is running the buses or not. They're they are not doing it for the festivals, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll expound on that in a bit. Um, but we were thinking of maybe going to Summerfest uh, for years. Uh, I would have free tickets. Um, and uh, since the county wasn't running the buses, Summerfest, I think, went out and got their own service or something, but they wanted $15 a person to take the bus. And we were like, oh, wow, that's... Uh, no, I don't think we'll go. And uh, uh, I am tie-in, kind of... Uh, Irish Fest, which is next weekend, I think. Um, the guy in charge of Irish Fest is a ham. And he knows uh, one of the guys in MRAC, and they did this last year, and they're doing it again this year. If anybody wants to ride the bus for four hours or or however long you want to, you get free admission and stuff. But they're putting APRS trackers on the buses and having hands sit on each bus so they can see where they are and uh, uh, tell people what's what. I think they're making a couple of other stops besides the parking rides. They're hitting a couple of hotels and things. But... Uh, uh, well, you said they, they did it last year. They're doing it again this year. Last year, they rented fancy, you know, long-haul coach-type buses. Uh, unfortunately, this year, they're just renting school buses, so it's not going to be as comfortable a ride. Anyway, uh, one more commercial, I guess, since that's a, a club thing. This weekend, for either of you guys... Uh, if you had the time, uh, the picnic, the Mars and MIC picnic, uh, Greenfield Park picnic area number two, coming off of 124th Street there. Greenfield Park is between Greenfield and Lincoln. Um, everyone is welcome, don't have to be... Oh, there's Radio Um Everyone's welcome, don't have to be a member, don't have to do anything. The main course is provided by the clubs um, and, and you know anything else you want you bring yourself um, and it's for anyone you know spouse and family etc so this year um, one of the guys one of the new guys that is uh, taking a net control turn on the rookie net is an official certified accredited barbecue judge he went through some training and stuff and he actually um, besides his day job you know travels around on weekends and judges barbecue competition things anyway he's going to be bringing some uh, 
barbecue pork. So I guess you get to see how it's supposed to be done. Or, or uh, you know, you can critique him real bad um, on that. But anyway, uh, that's happening Saturday uh, noon until you want to go home. Or until the uh, raccoons run you out. Because when the sun starts going down, they start coming out. Anyway, that's uh, more than enough here, so I'll send it back to Nat. This is WB9BWB. All right, thank you, Dave. And the barbecue judge thing is interesting. I, uh, I've got some uh, barbecue ribs that I make based on a recipe that I found on YouTube. Most unconventional, I suspect. A, a, a professional barbecue judge would disapprove of the way I do it. But I challenge anybody to make to make baby back ribs better than I can. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know everybody's got their own their own opinions about barbecue, so no two people will ever agree. I don't think even even professional judges, I suppose. Naturally, the uh, picnic happens on a weekend when I have other stuff going. I hope to be more than two hours away during the picnic. Unfortunately, otherwise I would like <coughs> excuse me would like to go to that. That's interesting, the uh, APRS on the bus thing. I guess I didn't, it never occurred to me that there were festivals this late in the year. I normally only go to German Fest, and we did not even do that this year. We go to German Fest, we go to State Fair, and then we go to Train Fest, and nothing in between. So I, I guess I don't really think of too much in between there. I know that the Harvest harvest fair or whatever they call that thing goes on October and maybe November sometime I don't know I went to that once or twice but uh, you know that, that drivers on your laptop that is an extremely frustrating thing that is uh, one of one of the things I cannot handle about Windows and one of the reasons I own a Pinebook Pro because <laughs> it cannot run Windows and cause those kinds of problems. Of course, it's designed to run Linux, and the uh, Mandrel Linux that comes on it can be uh, kind of finicky at times. Although, if my wife can use it, I, I suppose anybody can. But I, I won't have to worry about Windows and Windows updates, I guess, especially running NetBSD. We hardly ever get updates, which is a really, really nice thing. Nice thing, in my opinion. Your signal, Dave, is 5.9 out of 10, which is uh, significantly up from last month. And I don't have anything going back further than that for some reason. So last, oh, I take that back. In the in the past. Probably before you changed things around there, you were six and a quarter. Last month you were five, and uh, this month you're, you're what I'll call 5.9, just just shy of six. So audio seems a little bit different than last month. Not objectionable, just different. I'm not sure if you're using a different microphone or maybe different settings or something. I don't know. And uh, with that, I suppose. See if we have any further check-ins for the 2 a.m. net. Come now, please. <coughs> N9CXK. On Lake Beulah. Hi, everybody. Everybody sounding great here. All right, we got one more recognizing N9CXK. Carol, welcome to the net. And do we have anybody else? <coughs> Hearing none, I will turn it over to you, Carol, and 9 cxk from KC9UDX. KC9UDX and the rest of the net, and 9 cxk Well, hi, Matt, and uh, let's see, Frank, and Dave. Everybody, uh, like I said, sounding great, Matt. You're about 10 to 15 over 9 here, uh, and... Uh, 
Frank and Dave here, both about uh, S9 or so on, on this radio. So that's good. I, I can tell things are different. I have uh, my uh, my 20 foot long colon here up now, and it really has made a difference, at least here, and it has made a difference in some other uh, on some other frequencies too. I haven't had a lot of time to check it, but uh, it's been up for a couple weeks and uh, it's working very well. Matches up good, so that's the most important thing. I, I gave it a couple good shakes and whatever before I uh, got finished with the installation, and it seems to be fine, and it's it's waterproofed very well. So I think uh, I think I'll be okay there. I yeah, I can't uh, I can't keep up with you guys with the computer stuff. I mean, I well, I've been doing computer stuff for 35 years at work, so at home <coughs> I treat the computer like a tool too. I don't. I don't get too crazy about installing things. I use the computers. I have all kinds of older laptops from work, mostly with Windows 7 on them now. And uh, most of the time, they're programming police scanners, or they're programming uh, two-way radios, or they're programming ham radio stuff. So that's about what they do besides uh, helping me cruise the Internet. I don't. I don't get too crazy about installing stuff on them. They all work. They all work nicely. I do have a tough book I carry all the time. Can't, you can't hurt that thing. And uh, usually I pick up a computer from a friend of mine, uh, NG9X. Uh, every year or so I pick up another laptop from him. They're old but new to me and uh, always a little better than the one before. And so I'm pretty happy with those. I have another one now to configure for all kinds of things, but I do maintain a, uh, a, a Windows XP computer that has all my Kenwood and Motorola programming software on it because the bulk of that is still DOS-based, and then there was some newer stuff that was Windows-based, so they both uh, peacefully coexist there in Windows XP. And the fairs, well, all summer long we go to the we go to the flea markets. There's a big antique flea market in Elkhorn four times a summer, and that's really the one that we look forward to. It's just huge. It covers the whole Walworth County Fairgrounds, and there are a lot of good things there. Oh, just a second. There we go. And uh, so that's what we look forward to, and we will we will hit the Walworth County Fair. That's uh, like uh, on that uh, uh, August to September uh, time period there. I'm not sure what the dates are this year, but that's one of the biggest county fairs in the state. So that's uh, that's usually a good one. We go there and eat some stuff and come home. <laughs> it's not a lot else for us to do there. We do love to see the animals. Um, so we'll go through those houses, but that's about it. We don't get too carried away. I've been to the demo derbies and the tractor poles and things. Really noisy, I'll say that. Usually it's hot and noisy. <laughs> so, well, I don't know too much else. I have, I took today off and tomorrow off for some doctor visits. I had a physical today, had to have a COVID test for that. And then uh, tomorrow is a stress test. I guess that'll be a few hours. But uh, I told him, I said, I've never passed a stress test yet, so let's see if we can do better this time. So that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. It's going to be a kind of a kind of a hot, sticky day tomorrow. So if I'm inside walking the treadmill, that'll be okay. Uh, the physical went perfect. The COVID test went fine, so... Well, let's see what happens tomorrow. Guess that's old guy stuff. Now I'm talking about going to the doctor, but that is uh, that is what I'm doing, and then and then come home and get to work. Uh, so there, N9 CXK over over. All right, thank you, Carol. <coughs> and uh, I have not been to a doctor for such things like that for a very very long time at least 30 years. I have uh, had stress tests uh, more recent than that and I can tell you I would not <laughs> I would probably have a serious problem if I had to have a stress test now. 
For the past six years at my job, I am far less active than I ever used to be. <clears throat> I don't get time to get any kind of exercise at all anymore. So I would be in serious trouble with a stress test. We have a treadmill here, and I think two years ago I started to get into a habit of using that regularly just to get some kind of exercise. But then some other things happened here and now the treadmill is not accessible anymore. Don't know when that's going to change. Oh, I guess uh, one other thing I, I didn't mention. Uh, we did get a new dishwasher. I ordered this dishwasher, I think, in January. And it did finally arrive last weekend, right when I was just not in the mood for installing a dishwasher. And I guess it uh, turned into a big debacle when I uh, was in the middle of trying to connect the water supply. Just by touching the water pipe caused, you know, caused just the tiniest bit of stress on the, the pipe, the main big pipe going all the way through the house. The only original copper left in the basement. And it, uh, it, it sprung a major leak. That uh, plumbing is all 40 years old and it's the original pipes are all paper thin. Paper thin. I mean, they were that way when they were installed, so they're long overdue to be replaced. I started replacing all that stuff a long time ago, and this one section just did not get replaced. Well, it got replaced the hard way on Saturday. That was not not fun. And uh, something really irritating happened, too. You know, I converted everything to PEX here. Well, everything I've been adding and replacing, I use PEX for. And I found out the hard way on Saturday that they now have a new kind of PEX that looks the same and uses the same size designations but is totally incompatible. So I made numerous trips back and forth buying stuff. Very irritating. <coughs> anyway, <laughs> back to uh, back to what I was going to say here is uh, you mentioned the antique flea market at at the Walworth County Fairgrounds. I have never heard of that and I don't know why I haven't heard of that. I've been to the Walworth County Fair several times. It's not bad. Uh, I don't remember it too well, though it's been a very long time since I've gone. I've been to the tractor shows and tractor pulls and, and other things there. I don't appreciate tractor pulls too much anymore. I guess the first, you know, when I first started going to tractor pulls way back when, they were still you know, using normal everyday tractors and now they use purpose-built things and that, I guess, just doesn't interest me. But an, an antique flea market would be something I would really enjoy. I, I really miss going to flea markets in the days before the Made in China stuff. It used to be you could get all kinds of useful things that people didn't, didn't need anymore at flea markets and now when you go all there is is Chinese junk. But an antique flea market would be, would be really fun. And we're at the bottom of the list yet. Let's see if we have any further check-ins for the 2 a.m. net. Come now, please. All right, hearing none, we will go back to the top of the list. But before we do that, I will just say I don't think we're going to go too long here tonight unless something happens different with my voice. Maybe if I hold the microphone up and look upward. It seems for some reason today when I am looking down or leaning down to the microphone and talking, my throat is itching to, to no end. So we'll see how it goes here. But I think we'll at least make it till, uh, till our normal end time. But anyway, we'll go back to the top of the list. Frank W9JCC -C from KC9UDX. Okay, KC9UDX, W9JCC, and uh, good evening, Carol. Good to hear you. Uh, Super report wise, we uh, mapped 40 over 9, uh, Dave 5 and 9, and Carol 5 and 8, so everybody's coming through here in pretty good shape. And uh, I like the, that application of the uh, APLS on the bus. 
that kind of needed something. Some, some poor souls got to ride the bus for <laughs> four or five hours, I guess, uh, to, to make the system go. And I guess they'd probably, to really do it right, you just need a person on every bus, so I don't many people that would take, but uh, it's uh, a neat way to keep track of where the buses are. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of stuck on Windows. I've been using it for a long time, and uh, I use Microsoft Office. And my last computer was about uh, completely changed everything. I had to, I, it came with Windows 11, and, uh, and I tried to put Office on there. The old one that I had paid for a long time ago. Uh, I wouldn't take. The, it took the. It took the uh, a disk and everything, but when it come come time to uh, uh, do the final install, it said no, you can't do it. Uh, even though it's a valid disk, uh, you either got to buy Microsoft 365 or uh, or Windows. I'm sorry, Office 365 or or the uh, one one time buy of whatever the number was. So <laughs> we uh, we had to go. We went the, the road of the uh, uh, monthly uh, seven dollar fee, I guess. Um, gee, it's too bad on the dishwasher and the copper pipe. There, uh, our house is still has, it has the original copper pipe. I wonder why uh, uh, yours was so thin. I'm, I'm thinking mine is okay. I didn't ever thought of that the, the copper pipe would thin out. What? Uh, uh, there's something oxidizing there. What, what's going on there, uh, Matt? With the with the copper pipe, or is it just plain uh, thin to begin with? Uh, but I never, never run across that. And our house has been here since 1976. So, other than that, I spent a little. I spent about <laughs> a half hour, 45 minutes weeding this morning. Uh, my garden is way out of shape as far as uh, maintenance. And uh, this is the second time I've weeded now in the last few days because I've gone for almost since we planted uh, not weeding and it was a, a real forest out there. So uh, not too much more I thought on this one. We'll turn it back to Nelt. Uh, this is WNAJCC. All right. Thank you, Frank. And I, I think I could actually sit on a bus for four hours to do that. I think I would enjoy that. If I had four hours, I could... I could devote to that. The uh, my house was built a couple of years just after yours. Mine was built in '78-79. The uh, problem I have is the guy that built my house was an absolute cheapskate. I uh, have never met him, but I used to work with his grandson, so I got to hear some stories. And of course, I know firsthand what what he did here and what he didn't do. Uh, he, he literally bought the cheapest pipe he could get his hands on and it is I'd be surprised if it's a 32nd inch wall on that pipe or originally and it is worn down you know whatever it, you know it, you could there's areas where you could easily just push your finger through it probably and uh, it wasn't just the pipe everything he did here was like that you know I I used to joke about how I'm pretty sure the outlets in this house came from Seven Mile Fair. One of the first things I did when I moved into this house was replace all the breakers in the breaker panel and all of the outlets because all of the breakers were loose. They were all, you could tell, different. You know, they're all the same brand and same type. But, like I say, it, you know, it, it probably the guy went around to rummage sales and bought used breakers or something. That's that's what, they, what it was like. You could tell each one of them did not come from the same you know, lot, manufacturing lot, or even the same time. Uh, and every one of those breakers was falling out of the panel. It's nothing wrong with the panel, but the breakers just didn't hold in anymore. They, you know, you take the cover off the panel and all the breakers fall out. And all of the outlets here were exactly the same way. I, there's probably a handful of them yet that I haven't gotten around to changing, but that was, like I say, one of the first things I did when I moved in here was replace every, well, most of the outlets. The outlets were just like the breakers. Anything you plug into the outlets, the, the cord, would, the plug would just fall out. There's nothing holding it in unless you bent the prongs on the plug just to stay in there. Um, and those outlets were 
just the cheapest cheapest possible outlets you can imagine. And uh, well, like I say, I used to used to joke that he got them at Seven Mile Fair, but the reality is he probably didn't even do that. He probably again just got them used at rummage sales or something. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, as far as Windows. I have only ever used Windows when I have had particular software and hardware that required it. I've got Windows running on the machine that handles the camera and does the uh, uploading to YouTube for the live stream here. Because the video hardware that I use with it only works with Windows and only works with Windows XP. Um, I tried to use Windows 7 and at one point there was software that would run this hardware for Windows 7 but you know it, between the time that that existed and the time I tried it out they had upgraded the software so it would no longer work which has been my experience a lot with Windows you get newer versions of stuff and it, and it just plain does not work um, the only other thing I have that requires Windows is an EEPROM burner which it really frustrates me because when I bought that I bought it because there was promise of somebody making uh, Linux software for it and nobody ever did so it only runs in Windows and I do not have a computer running Windows for that purpose I have a computer that normally runs Linux because well there's a long story behind that anyway it will dual boot if I ever need to use that EEPROM burner, which is pretty rare, I can uh, unplug the network connection and boot Windows 7 and use that EEPROM burner. Other than that, there's no need for me to have Windows anymore, which is which is really nice. And uh, I guess, Carol, in response to something else you said I was going to say before and I forgot, uh, you were talking about how you use computers and, and I guess I've been using computers from a hobbyist perspective since 1984 or 1985. Uh, computers are, are a large hobby for me and I've only used them at work in small capacity. I guess at my current job I could use, it would be very handy for me to be able to use my computer at work to connect to PLCs and, and things like that but the company has restricted our use of these computers so much that they're little more than web browser capable. You can't do almost anything on them anymore. So even though I would like to use them for connecting to things, it's just not even possible. I let, have to let other people do that. And with that, we'll go to Dave, WB9BWP from KC9UDX.
2010 version. That was paid for. No, it, it was it was uh, work stuff because I was, that's when I was working for myself, and you know, but it cost like I don't know seven eight hundred dollars at the time, and uh, it uh, refuses to install on the Windows 10 machines because it doesn't know what Windows 10 is. It would probably run, but it just won't install. I remember uh, having some uh, software where the software itself worked fine, but the installer program wouldn't run because it was checking and didn't get a response that it wanted to see. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, where stuff is now. Uh, plumbing things, that's the... I don't like plumbing, so I, I tend to not want to do that. Um, but along that same line, oh, man, there's the time. Um, I can never find a plumber that's any good. We had our kitchen redone a couple of years ago, and you know, they, they had all their own people except for electricians and plumbers. And, uh, well, the electricians were the stupidest people I ever saw. And the plumber, he's like, oh, well, yeah, I got to do this. You know, we got to, you're getting that stuff, oh, we got to do this. Okay, I never heard of that. And, uh, like, um, they were moving the laundry room. They were giving us upstairs laundry room. And we were getting uh, the washer and dryer that we were buying happened to have a steam function, even though we didn't care, we weren't going to use it. But the plumber was insisting, oh, we got to do all this extra work here because of that steam stuff. Yes, you're fine, whatever. So he, he does all these things, and then when it comes to inspection time, and I'm showing the inspector around, and I said, yeah, over here is uh, what he had to do for the steam things. And the inspector looks and goes, I don't know anything about that. I don't care. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Um, Audio-wise, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm using uh, my headset instead of a desk mic. Uh, part of my continuing shuffling here. Um, that's just what's hooked up right now. Um, that's one of the on-the-list projects is uh, a microphone switcher. Anyhow, and the stress tests. Well, um, I always seem to make it through okay, but that didn't matter uh, a couple of years ago, well, 2019. Um, spent four days in the hospital where they had to uh, go in and, should we say, clean out some pipes, and I have three stents that they added. And so then after that, you have to go through three months of uh, special rehab where uh, they can beat you pretty hard during that. And as part of the, shall we say, final exam, they put you on a treadmill, set it to two and a half miles an hour, and every three minutes they up the elevation. Uh, let's see, I finished... 21 minutes, I think it was 14%, and they actually stopped me. They said, no, don't, don't, you don't need to go any farther. Um, and so then ever since then, you know, it's like the doctors are like, uh, okay, ever since then the doctors are like, okay, what are you doing? You gotta be doing some, some stuff. And in fact, um, I had that visit uh, back in June. And he was like, you know, what do you do for exercise? And I, we have a treadmill that I actually use uh, in nice weather. I'm outside walking. And I convinced him, you know, that I'm doing enough. And so he said, well, okay, I was going to, I was going to have you do another stress test, but nah, that's okay. If you're really doing that, you're doing fine. I'm still here, so I guess it's, I guess it is that I'm doing fine. With that, this is WB9, BWB.
All right, thank you, Dave. And the headset sure explains it. And you mentioned Windows 10, <coughs> excuse me, Windows 11. I remember very well when Microsoft said there will never ever be a Windows 11. You people are conspiracy theorists. Stop telling people there's Windows 11. And then uh, somebody somebody leaked Windows 11 to the public, and then Microsoft admitted, well, yeah, I guess we really do have Windows 11. Windows 10 was supposed to be the uh, the final Windows. It was never going to be upgraded. It was always going to well be continuously updated, but never never go to a different version. And then then I guess they must have changed their mind about that. Well, I don't know if you've heard this, but now Windows 12 promises to be the last Windows, and it will continuously update, but you will never have to upgrade to a different version because it will be the last version. So I don't know when that's supposed to be released, but I've heard a lot of problems with that already. Um, different problems than the Windows 11 kind of problems. And you talk about uh, versions that will not run on certain versions. Well, this computer that's doing the live streaming right now is exactly like that. The, uh, the hardware drivers for the video hardware that I use uh, will only run on Windows XP. You can run them on Windows 7, but they don't work. And in fact, they do something nefarious. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's it's more than just not working. So I have to run Windows XP. Now the problem is the software that you can use the, to do the live streaming uh, originally worked in XP and there were hundreds of versions of it that worked in XP but that has been taken off the market and they don't allow it anymore and the minimum at the time that I got the software the minimum operating system was Windows 7 and I had to modify the installer and jump through a bunch of hoops to make that Windows 7 software work on Windows XP which it does just fine uh, provided that it's the 32-bit version of Windows 7 software and it if I had to install it again, I probably couldn't. So hopefully that computer never gives up until I find a different way to do this stuff. Uh, what else? Ah, excuse me. What else was I going to say? Well, I have in my previous uh, places of employment, I have done a lot of plumbing. I am uh, a very, very adept plumber. I, uh, I'm not up to spec on codes and, and residential, you have to do this and have to do that kind of stuff, but I, I don't mean to brag and I, I don't like to brag, but if there's anybody out there that can sweat pipes better than me, I, I'd like to meet them. I have, I've done an, I, countless uh, joints of, of sweated pipe uh, for air for for steam for water for hydraulic and I've gotten very very good at it but I uh, and I guess I'll I'll say this I I did something really stupid here on Saturday when I had to sweat a pipe I normally normally always wear safety glasses when I do this stuff and I, I don't know why I didn't probably because I was so irritated about having to do what I had to do well, I was sweating a PEX fitting onto a copper pipe. And I'm not exactly sure how this happened because I was not standing un directly underneath it, nor was I looking directly at it, but I had a big blob of molten silver solder go directly into my eye. And uh, <laughs> I guess that's a warning to anybody that hears that. Make sure you're wearing the safety glasses or be prepared to suffer the consequences. I uh, have very fast reflexes. I always have. When something is going to my eye, I shut my eyes before it gets there. I don't care how fast it's going, and I somehow managed to do that again on Saturday. It burnt my eyelid very, very bad. Uh, upper and lower eyelid are, are very, very burnt, but my eye is just fine. So. Oh, I was going to say something else, but I just derailed myself. Anyway. <laughs> Next we'll go to Carol N9CXK and Carol before I turn it over to you I will tell you that you are a six and a quarter out of ten on my receive meter. 
I didn't try to fine tune you any better to make sure that that's exactly what it is, but that's a little bit down from your eight and a quarter of the past. Not that it matters, you're perfectly copyable. And I will turn it over to you, Carol, and 9 cxk from KC9UDX. Well, I probably was talking too long and uh, put you to sleep, Carol. If if not, uh, go ahead. N nine C X K from K C nine U D X. <coughs> All right, I'm not hearing Carol. But I hear something else, and I don't know if it's on this frequency or something ad adjacent. And quite a bit of band noise, distant band noise, very strange. So if any of you guys hear somebody else trying to check in here, let me know. But I'm also going to ask, are there any more check-ins for the 2 a.m. net? Come now, please. All right, I am not hearing anything, but somebody is definitely trying to transmit here or near here. So, Frank, I will turn it to you, and maybe you can hear somebody if they're trying to check in here. W9JCC from KC9UDX. Yeah, KC9UDX for W9JCC. Uh, I don't have now, Matt, but uh, I think it was when uh, Dave was talking. It might have been your day, uh, uh, but there was somebody underneath. Uh, and I, it just, you know, it, it sounded like that probably a little off frequency, but I, I don't hear anything now. Uh, There's somebody that's very, very weak. And uh, you mentioned about the outlets there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I put all the outlets in the ham shack here when I built the ham shack in the basement. And of course, they were put in about 1970. I think. And uh, every time I have to ground everything for lightning, I pull the plugs out of the wall as well to get the ground disconnected. And uh, these things wear out. I've only replaced uh, a quad uh, set over on the left hand side of the shack here. And now there's another one, which is an original, over to my right. But, uh, is I'm getting a little bit uh, intermittent, so I'll have to get some new ones. I usually go to Home Depot or someplace and just get those levels, uh, whatever they sell there, and use those. But uh, uh, you would think they could make them a little bit more reliable. I guess they, I, I would kind of expect that kind of stuff to last a lifetime, but uh, maybe we just, uh, you know, maybe they don't expect people to uh, disengage the the plug maybe uh, you know a few times a month <laughs> and uh, about windows I just wish they'd make it more reliable I wish they would have left 10 alone if they, I, I'm not crazy about 11 um, but uh, I'm getting used to it and um, let's see as far as sweating pipes I've done a little bit of that but not enough to be an expert for sure I've done it when I had to but that's it. And too bad about, you know, getting something in your eye like that, like a, a blob of solder up. So that could have been disastrous than that. And, uh, yeah, I, in my older age, I've been uh, wearing some <laughs> safety glasses all my often, uh, just in case, because you don't need any extra, extra trouble, for sure. 
Okay, hello, people from the back to uh, net control. This is WIJCC. All right, thank you, Frank. And uh, if there's somebody else trying to get in here, please come now. All right, hearing nobody, when you were transmitting, Frank, near the end, somebody was definitely, definitely uh, transmitting uh, very near here. Probably somebody carrying on a conversation on an adjacent frequency, I suppose. Uh, you know, I'm normally very good about safety glasses. I have dozens and dozens of pairs of safety glasses around here. I have them in strategic places so that I always have them when I need them. And I always wear them when I need to. And I don't know why, like I say, I don't know why I didn't do it on Saturday. <laughs> but I'll, this, uh, this blob of solder, when it bounced off of my eye, you know, when I finally shook it out of my eye and, and got it back onto the floor, it, it spread out well over an inch in diameter. It, so you can imagine how big it was when it hit my eye. It's <laughs> you can uh, actually see on my eyelids where it must have been rolling around from the heat, and it had to be well over a thousand degrees. Silver solder uh, melts at a very high temperature to begin with, and to get to get the pipe hot enough to make the the solder flow properly takes a, a great amount of heat beyond that. Anyway, you know when you talk about unplugging things all the time like that, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is when I was in China. I've got pictures of this. Unfortunately I did not have the really good means to make a video. It would have made a really good YouTube video. The outlets there are modular because they have appliances that are designed to be used all over the world because they manufacture things for all over the world there. And so they don't have a standard outlet. They use probably nine different nine different standards. And because of that, all of the outlets are modular. They have a outlet and there's a thing that plugs into the outlet that has the actual outlet in it. <laughs> and a lot of stuff there, most stuff there is 220 volts and the circuit protection is an absolute joke. You don't ever want to have a short circuit there. Uh, but it, the, what I was going to say is when you pull something out of the outlet there you've got to make sure to hold the modular portion of the outlet into the outlet, out into the receptacle in the wall. Otherwise, the whole thing comes apart. And they never come apart all the way. They come apart just enough to make it extra super dangerous to try and put it back together. <laughs> uh, somewhere, I, somewhere I did take pictures of that. I'll have to dig that stuff up. Anyway, next we'll go to Dave, WB9BWP from KC9UDX. Okay. Yeah, I was hearing that... Uh noise too, but then it seemed to, uh, it seemed to cut back. Um, I don't know if it went away or if it just cut back way down in the last couple of minutes there, so maybe it was someone trying to be on another frequency or close by, don't know. And uh, talking about outlets and stuff, it made me think about, uh, you know, um, dual, um, Binding posts on three quarter inch centers, and um, a lot of uh, uh, speakers, of, you know, high fi type speakers, would have binding posts. You know, the dual binding posts, they're three quarter inch centers, and so you make up a cable with the dual banana plug thing. And uh, some years ago, a number of manufacturers started changing the spacing <laughs> on their speaker terminals on amplifiers and receivers and things because supposedly uh, in Europe 
where a lot of the outlets are not flat blades but uh, two round pins and they were almost it's metric but it was almost three quarters of an inch and I don't know if people really were doing this or if there was just somebody that uh, figured out that it might happen that people would take double banana plugs and try to put them in the outlet and it would it would go in and you know potentially cause uh, problems either blowing up the stuff or blowing up people so a lot of audio guys have gone and changed the spacing on that so you can't use a dual uh, banana plug thing and it's all because of the European outlets now like I say whether somebody actually did that um, I don't know you know the the safety thing on lawnmowers where you have to hold that extra bar and, and stuff supposedly came about because of people trying to turn their uh, power lawnmower into uh, hedge trimmers and they cut their fingers off but <laughs> yeah that's that's where we are today I guess anyhow I've told uh, plenty of stories here tonight so I guess I'll just turn it back to that this is WB9 PWP All right, thank you, Dave. And I could uh, almost clearly hear somebody else's voice there while you're while you're transmitting. So I would guess that somebody is uh, somebody is distantly using FM very very near our frequency. They probably cannot hear us. Somebody probably having a conversation with somebody in the other direction or something. I have no idea. I don't know if you guys were around here on the net years ago when we had to move to this frequency. I don't remember who was all active at that time. But we had a, a big problem with something that seemed to be automated. It seemed to reply to us when we were transmitting and of course then it would be stomping over the next guy trying to talk. It was very strange. Um, I don't know how well I documented that, what it actually was. It'd be interesting to uh, go back to that frequency and see if that stuff is still there. Nobody could figure out what it was. And all that safety stuff is really irritating. I was talking to my wife, you know, this is almost the same, when we were at the fair. You know, a couple of years ago I could walk into the fair without having to walk through a metal detector I could have my Swiss Army knife in my pocket I could wear my steel toe shoes and a belt have my phone in my pocket my keys in my pocket and nobody cared and it didn't matter and now now you cannot go in with a knife even as small as my wife's miniature Swiss Army knife which you couldn't use as a weapon I don't think if you wanted to And of course, you have a real hard time getting in. It's really frustrating. They uh, they make all of these rules that punish the 99% of us, and probably don't affect the 1% that were causing problems that caused all of the rules in the first place. Just like all the safety stuff. And with that, we'll see if Carol is back. N9CXK from KC9UDX. KC9UDX and the net and 9CXK. Yep, had to uh, take care of something uh, rather quickly there. So uh, sorry about that, Chief. I, uh, I'm not sure where we are right now, but uh, I will say I'm uh, having a good time listening to these signals. Nice, quiet, quieting the receiver re uh, signals here. Everybody's sounding great. And uh, I don't know, just uh, kind of a busy week for me uh, with this, this whole, all this doctor business. Uh, running in and out kind of throw me off the schedule. But, uh, the uh, Walmart, or the uh, Elkhorn uh, Antique and Flea Market is, uh, is yes, uh, it's, uh, they take care of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, 
Well, they make sure that everybody at the fair is selling antiques or something similar, collectibles, a few antiques mostly, and so they don't let anybody else in there. Yeah, we have this McGuanagall flea market here, and that is just like a really bad seven-mile fair. It's just all that Chinese junk. There's there's nothing there anymore. Maybe one or two people that still come and sell their their own rummage, but uh, they've made the spaces so expensive here at McGuanagall that. I think people can't afford it, and uh, and they don't, you know. So it's all those people with the the blankets and the dresses and the Trump T-shirts and and the hats and the sunglasses. It's just all junk. There's hardly anything there anymore. So we look forward to the Elkhorn Flea Market, uh, and it is coming up on Sunday. It's one day, and it is Sunday. Sunday next coming up, $5 to get in. It's very busy. You need to get yourself there nice and early. We usually get there around 7 in the morning, and we're still waiting in line and parking at the back of the parking lot. So quite uh, quite well attended. Um, other than that, I do not have anything else. I don't know if anybody else checked in here, but uh, I shall be here for a while yet. Let's see what time it is. Oh, it's a little after 9. Okay, got it. KC9 UDX. This is N9CXK. All right. Thank you, Carol. And there again, I could hear somebody talking. Almost, almost intelligible in the background. Not, not affecting my ability to copy you. But somebody is uh, definitely on this frequency. I don't hear him in the space when you're done talking maybe they're on sideband I don't know it's, uh, it's kind of interesting and you know one of the problems I I suspect why all of the flea markets are nothing but Chinese junk anymore even the ones that don't cost anything to get in I don't think most people have have things that are worth selling at a flea market anymore and that McGuanagall wasn't, wasn't always like that. It was a normal flea market at one time. Um, I have some 8-tracks that I bought there. I have a Commodore VIC-20 I bought there. I have miscellaneous old electronic junk that I bought there. But nothing, nothing like that anymore. And, you know, in the... 90s and up to maybe a little bit in the early 2000s, people had useful stuff that they didn't need anymore, and I don't think that's the case anymore. Most people, when they don't need something anymore, they throw it in the trash because it really isn't worth anything. Which reminds me, a guy that I know pretty well used to work with him. He's also a ham. N9FKT. Uh, he found an accordion at a restore store in, I think, Greenfield for $100. And he sent that to me while I was in the middle of my plumbing nightmare on Saturday, so I didn't, didn't look into it too much, but I suppose I should look into that again. It looked like it had multiple travel registers, and anything like that for $100, if the bellows are intact, is a good deal no matter what the other condition is. Well, I don't know how much longer I can go here, but let's see if we have any more check-ins for the 2 a.m. net. Come now, please. All right, I don't hear anybody trying to check in. Maybe there is somebody, but they're too far away. And maybe what else we're hearing is somebody else on AM, a little more distant. Who knows what the band conditions are really like. I've been hearing some strange noises in the background, which are clearly not local. At least I think not local. And I know the sun is up to some things. We also have the Perseid Meteor Shower going on to some extent right now. 
I suppose there's complete cloud cover so you can't even verify that. <clears throat> but let's go back to the top of the list. Probably go one or two more times here. W9JCC from KC9UDX. Okay, uh, KC9UDX, W9JCC. Yeah, heard that noise too. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't seem to be there when we're not talking. It's usually when there's a strong station on there, so. Uh, don't know quite uh, what to make of that. Well, I don't have too much more here, and uh, when he was. Uh, Calling down to me, uh, wondering where I was, so I think I'll probably have uh, say 73s and go up and uh, spend a lot of time with the XYL, but could hear everybody, uh, Dave and Carol and uh, you, Matt, and uh, Dave, Carol, and Dave, and uh, Dave, and Carol, and 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 Dave, and Carol, I will say 7-3 to you. Thank you for stopping in. And uh, I won't keep you from your wife. That's far more important than radio. I suspect that what we're hearing is somebody talking on sideband. Uh, when we're listening in AM, we would not, not normally hear them. Unless there's a carrier which is why we probably only hear them when somebody else is transmitting. I can uh, turn on my, my uh, what you call it, control, the uh, spot control, so I, can, uh, so I can tune my receiver. Well, I can turn that on and it acts sort of like a BFO and then I can hear sideband stuff. So maybe I'll turn that on when I'm when I unkey here. Anyway, next we'll go to Dave, WB9BWP from KC9UDX. Okay. Yeah, well, and of course, after I said that, it seemed to uh, cut down a little bit. Uh, it was really loud here on the last round for all you guys. So, yeah, I guess I'll have to tune around, too, and see what's, uh, what's going on, what I might be missing. I haven't done much operating here uh, this summer at all between uh, uh, playing outside with antenna stuff and trying to get everything uh, put back together inside. Uh, and then, of course, even talking about plumbing, we're having a new water softener put in. On Thursday, so an area that I was piling up a lot of the stuff as I had and shuffle the basement around. Well, that all went near there, so now I got to clear that out and move that around. So I tend to spend a lot of time moving things around, um, and I got to figure out how to stop that. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess uh, I got a good idea there. Um, I got uh, plenty of things I can be doing here. So maybe I'll say 73 also. And again, just remind everybody and Carol came in after I talked about it. Um, Mars and RAC picnic on Saturday. Greenfield Park picnic area number two. Noon until whenever. The club provides the main course. You bring whatever else you like. Um, there's also a free Racine Ham Fest in the morning, or Racine Free Fest. That sounds better, I guess. Um, so you can always go to that in the morning and then come to the picnic in the afternoon. I've often thought about, but Milwaukee probably wouldn't go along with something like that in the parks. Uh, like, uh, having a, a ham fest kind of thing at a, at a park and then, you know, ham fest until noon and then from noon on turn it into a picnic. Anyhow, I'll say 73 to everybody and uh, always good here on this net, uh, you know, AM doing something different and then somebody brings something up and could probably talk for hours on any of those topics. <laughs> So anyhow, 73 to everybody out there, and even those 
other guys that maybe they can hear us once in a while. Who knows? Um, with that, this is WP9, BWP, back to net. All right, thank you, Dave. They do seem to be gone. So maybe it's somebody confused about what we're doing. Trying to get a hold of us, I have no idea. And uh, I don't know if now if I said it now or not. I think I was going to, and I didn't, but I'll say 7-3. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I don't do any other operating except this. I don't do anything. And I guess I should have brought this up earlier. My daughter has been studying to take the technician test for years now. Not, not very seriously. She's been doing it on and off. And she's just, the, I don't know, within the past couple of months, I think I've been really getting on her case. I'd like to get her to take the test before she goes back to school just because this keeps getting dragged on and on. And of course they just recently changed the technician test and holy cow did they change it. There are a lot of things in there that I wouldn't have any idea about if she hadn't been studying this. And it's actually good for me that, that she's doing this and I get to learn about some of these new things. There's all kinds of, all kinds of changes on that technician exam stuff with uh, with digital modes and things, different ways of operating that I'm just totally unfamiliar with. Anyway, uh, oh, I was going to also say, you know, it's rare to hear something unusual in the middle of the two meter band here. One of the things I used to like to do Back when I worked second shift, I would get home too late to do anything, but I'd actually have time to come down here and get on the radio. One of the things that was really fun to do was to make long distance 10 meter contacts in the worst part of the solar cycle, in the middle of the night. The band would open up when nobody, absolutely nobody expected it. I would have very clear conversations with people in Texas on 10 meters FM. For some reason there was just a, an absolute direct path from here to this one spot in Texas that ran for months. Every night, at, you know, just at random times that, that frequency would open up and I could talk to these people clear as day. And it was right in the lowest part of the solar cycle when nobody expects there to be open a band opening on 10 meters. Anyway, I'll turn it over to you, Carol, and then uh, maybe we'll shut things down here. So we'll see N9CXK from KC9UDX. N9 CXK. Very good. Yes, I am. Uh, I am also ready to wrap it up here. Uh, sure, appreciate you guys all being here. This is uh, very enjoyable for me, and I was also hearing the uh, other signal on the frequency. I thought I did hear it after uh, Matt unkeyed at one point. I heard it. It wasn't really intelligible, but it did seem to be here. So I'll be listening around. Also, I'm just. Uh, Sometimes I'm a little apprehensive that maybe we're interfering with some uh, space communications here because, you know, the space shuttle comms are just above us. Uh, dot eight, dot eight two five, they're around in that area. So I'm always a little uh, worried about uh, overlapping with somebody uh, doing some space communications, but uh, never experienced that before. I will be listening around. Maybe I'll put the horizontal antenna on and uh, see what I can hear. But I'm uh, quite uh, quite impressed and happy with my new antenna here. You guys are a very strong match. Your signal is a solid 15 over here. And that's uh, that's a pretty good distance. And the other guys, uh, like I said, around S9. That's great. So uh, very happy to be here. Be ha I'm happy to be heard. 
So uh, everybody, uh, yeah, man, uh, think about think about going to Elkhorn. It's very busy, but very enjoyable. No junk there. Just uh, nice antiques and collectible stuff. A lot of uh, rummagey type stuff. Useful things. Every once in a while, you'll find some nice uh, nice old radios there. Even sometimes an old time CB radio or something like that. All kinds of things, but uh, none of that uh, none of that commercial crap. So think think about that. And uh, the other guys uh, have a good time at the uh, festivals that you're going to go to. I would really love to go to Irish Fest, but I just don't. Uh, I don't see it being in the cards this year. We'll see. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be more summer like, so enjoy that. And then uh, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back at work on uh, Thursday. I can't wait. <laughs> so everybody have a great night and uh, take care of yourself. I will uh, talk to uh, some of you guys on uh, probably Friday night on 10 meters. KC9 UDX and the rest of the net. And 9 CXK73 all. Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Carol. And uh, unfortunately, I won't <laughs> be able to go this Sunday. But I will definitely look into that and see when else they're doing that stuff. That uh, that would be a very good thing. Of course, I got to get back into going to some of the ham fests and things too. One of my one of my concerns was interfering with the space stuff and a few other things in this area of the band. But I think we we worked it out and a bunch of us discussed it and I think we were pretty safe here. And this is more or less the right place for us to be. It's not very official, but it seems to be where everybody else does this stuff. Anyway, I guess we probably, I probably should uh, be more attentive, maybe listen a little bit longer before I start the net. I did uh, hear some things before I started the net tonight. I did try to contact whoever was there, see if anybody needed to use the frequency. I did not get any response, and of course all that activity all died down within the last 15 minutes before I started the net, so it was kind of moot at that point. But maybe it would be nice to listen longer and try to figure out who it is and what they're doing and make sure we're not interfering. And it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we had to move just once in a while only because I have the capability to do that and it would take me a while to figure out how to do it again. Um, I've got a VFO and I guess I could figure it out probably pretty quickly but I'd have to do it. I'd have to figure it out to remember how to use it. I'm so out of practice. Anyway, I'll keep babbling if I don't sign out here. We sure never well, we do once in a great while run out of things to talk to here, but it is pretty pretty rare. But I will say, 7-3 do Carol, and thank you for being here. And I'll read my official script here. This concludes the 2 a.m. net. We will meet again on the 13th of September. Holy cow, is it that, it's very late in the year. Until then, this is KC9UDX. 7-3 and good night. Matt, the next Elkhorn flea market will be September 25. So maybe you can jot that down in your calendar. September 25th, that'll be another Sunday. And that'll be the final one for the year. KC9 UDX and 9CXK. Thanks for running things. Really appreciate it. See ya. All right, thank you, Carol. I will certainly write that down, and, and we'll see what happens. 7-3 from KC9UDX. And the noises are back. Seven zero.
girl with two and a half. Well, I hear him here, and all I can say is one, four, five point something. <laughs> my my meter is not that well calibrated, but I do believe they're on sideband. I I could be wrong, uh, but I can hear them very well when I turn on my oscillator. But I can't make out anything they're saying. Anyway, I uh, I do have to wrap up the. Uh, live streaming stuff here so I'm gonna head out KC9UDX yeah I, uh, I ran the VFO up and uh, 702 702 and a half about uh, they were intelligible so I don't know that may be uh, yeah that may be FM I'll uh, switch to FM and see what I can hear have a good night man thank you and 9CXK